Yippee a yay! Hello, dear viewers. We're absolutely thrilled to have you with us today. As promised, we've prepared a special treat for you, a fun training video showing you how to create your very own in paint workflow. Yep, you heard it right, tips and tricks for beginners. And what could also be interesting for advanced users, the video also provides a first glimpse into the fully automated workflow that Murphy's currently working on for us. He's grabbed a bunch of stuff from the Rank 3 custom nodes to boost performance and make things easier to handle. Easier and better than Automatic 1111, at least that's our opinion. We're aiming to release a first version by the weekend. However, we still lack the time to create an explanatory video to go with it. We should definitely show that in parallel, as the workflow is already largely completed. You can take a look at it before we start explaining how you can build the in-paint workflow yourselves. We've put together a small workflow as a starting point, and we'll also make it available for download. In our opinion, this is exactly what you need to dive into the capabilities of Comfy UI. Let's take a closer look at it. Here we have the Python GOS nodes, including the checkpoint loader. These are among the must-have custom nodes. With these, we can display preview images and information from Civit AI directly. We've created almost everything else with the custom nodes from Retrie. Normally, we wouldn't necessarily need this here. But if you want to automate and expand the workflow, this is currently the best of the best among the custom nodes that we've discovered so far. And here we also have the context big from Rank 3, which Murphy has used very frequently in his new automate workflow. The power lore loader is also really cool, even though we don't normally use it because we want to write the lore information directly into the metadata of our images. We've also included the auto CFG here. This can speed up the workflow a bit. However, that's not the reason why we've added it here. Rather, we want to show you that you can get really silly results if you're not careful and you've turned it on once and haven't turned it off again before using a workflow without auto CFG. We just want to demonstrate that to you here. The sampler is still missing, we'll build it in right away. And at the end, you'll also see the HD prompt saver. The node fits well with the rank 3 nodes. You can save metadata with it in the workflow. We forgot to connect the image here. Let's quickly fix that. Okay, and now right click. Add node. Sampling. Key sampler. Select it, and there it is. So, now let's connect the outputs from the context node to the sampler. Just fill in all the inputs. The output still needs to be connected. Okay, that's it. Start, let's go. Get ready to be surprised, the result won't be mind-blowing, but that's what we want to show you. Automatic CFG is taking effect, but it's not properly integrated. We'll fix that right away and make a few optimizations. Yes, the result is really crap. But that's exactly the point we wanted to show you. If you don't use certain nodes properly, it can lead to unexpected and undesirable results. Let's insert the automatic CFG node and see how the workflow picks up and the image improves significantly. Voila! That looks really amazing, doesn't it? And now something for the automatic 1111 fans. Let's incorporate the key sampler from the Inspire custom nodes. Then the images should come out just like with automatic 1111. We need to connect the outputs of the context node to the new sampler now. Now I'll show you how we can bring the selection fields into the input and then connect them directly to the context node. Then we can control most things directly from the front. 
right click on the node and select convert widget to input. Then you can select each one individually. But beware, stay away from the scheduler. It doesn't work with the Inspire K sampler because there are additional schedulers present that are not in the Rank 3 node. If you connect it, the workflow will crash. But it would work with a standard sampler. Here we briefly show you the differences. Let's quickly connect the noodles and then we can get started. We'll let the workflow run once with automatic CFG turned off, then we can delete the node again. Oh, Ziggy! You forgot to connect the latent output. And yes, I get to hear Murphy saying again, as soon as you do it right, it works. And as you can see, We've turned off automatic CFG. The workflow runs a bit slower, but the image is just as good. There are different options for choosing samplers and schedulers, and it also depends on the model. Here we show you one of our favorites, which we love to use when working with this key sampler, the A's STXL is scheduler and the TPMP P2M SDE is sampler. Just a quick note on automatic CFG, in our opinion, you achieve the best results when the node is installed but turned off. Sounds strange, but it's true. And we want to remind you one last time that you need to be careful if you have this node in your workflow and then switch workflows, the influence may still be there. And if you're using a workflow without automatic CFG, it can cause problems. Then you'd either have to start your comfy UI new or install the node and turn it off. Alright, enough beating around the bush. Let's put together the InPaint workflow and pull it from Murphy's Ultimate B9 workflow. First, let's duplicate the browser tab. Next, let's load the Ultimate B9 workflow that you learned about in the last video. Whether you drag and drop the workflow into the browser window or directly retrieve it from the PIS folder under Comfy UI, as we did by saving it through Python GOS, doesn't matter. Let's go to the InPaint section. We could have also simply typed I. To be able to move the groups, we first need to unlock them all. Let us show you quickly how it's done. You should always save your workflow temporarily. When you do things like this, you can always revert to your temporary state if you mess something up, so you don't lose all your work. Now we'll move the groups downwards and apart a bit so that we can work with them more easily. The black nodes come from the rank 3 nodes and are used to toggle the groups on and off. We don't need them, so let's just delete them. Or let's first see where the connection leads. There might be a few nodes grouped together there. Ah, uh, do we have the collector? It is used to summarize the switching on of individual groups or nodes. We can disconnect. To be sure, let's first see where they lead. We may find more switches or collectors. We can disconnect the connections to the nodes directly. The connections to the switches show us the rank 3 switch nodes that we can delete. We can simply disconnect the connection to the image from the ultimate workflow. Here we can start with our new workflow and replace the pipe node. Usually, you can expand the collapse by clicking on the point at the top left. If that doesn't work, for example, if the node is pinned, then either release the pin or simply right-click and press collapse again. Here are two connections from outside for the sampler name and the scheduler. Let's make it easy and switch the node to internal selection.
All right, now we have the two outputs from the in paint group left. Let's just disconnect them to keep everything tidy. Dear viewers, everything is ready for copying now. Press the control key and select everything. Now, select everything with control plus C to copy, switch to the browser tab and paste with control plus V. Let's move all the nodes to a more suitable location behind our starter workflow. We'll use groups for this. We'll show you how it's done. Be cautious with groups without locks. If you're not careful, you can mess up all your nodes and that's no fun. So always make sure to lock the groups after moving them. Now is the time to speed up the video a bit, as the steps are always the same. Just for completeness, here's a quick rundown on how you can rename the groups, change their colors, and most importantly, lock them again. We'll save that for the other groups. We just wanted to show you how it's done. Of course, we'll fully adapt the complete workflow for download here. Let's set the save note aside for now. Next, let's connect the image node from the context node to the input in the inpaint group. Let's turn on all the nodes in the groups. We can then adjust them completely using the switches when we start the workflow, as shown in our previous video. By holding down the ALT key and dragging the node simultaneously, we duplicate the context node. Now let's drag the copied node to the position where we want to relink the outputs of the pipe. Alright, let's build the connections. Positive, negative, model, clip, VAE. We can now collapse the context big node. We don't need anything else here at this point. Ah, now I've forgotten something. We still need the context big node. So, let's copy it again, as seen earlier, and connect it to the current one. Done. Now let's drag the new one all the way to the back. Detach the save node and bring it to the back. Actually, it would have been easier to just copy and delete the node. Ziggy wants to have her fun too, so we're just wandering around aimlessly here. But Ziggy gets to the finish line too. Here once for image and once for seed. And here. Once for latent and once for image. That should be it now. Let's do one more test run, and if everything works, yippee ki -yay. Motherfa exclamation mark dot dot error. We did it. Let's run through it and test the workflow with our blue eye test. Perfect, 
Then we can proceed here, the settings seem to be already fitting. Now we set the value to 2 and then turn off all the other switches except for the second one. Now, as described here, let's disconnect the connection between the two red nodes. In the next group, we should also limit ourselves to one option. Let's just use the focus in paint. For this, the values in the first two nodes need to be set to 1. And also set the value to 1 here for focus in paint. Now we just need to turn off all switches except for the first one. Let's check the prompt group. The blue eyes are still from the ultimate workflow, perfect, then we don't need to change anything here either. Let's cue prompt and off we go. Oops! There it is, the planned error message. Now we need to mask the eyes here. Open the mask editor and place two blobs over the eyes. Now, very important, don't forget to reconnect the two red nodes. Let's cue prompt, fire away for the blue eyes. So, now for the grand finale. Look at how the eyes slowly turn into a deep blue while Ziggy is full of joy. It's just fantastic to see everything coming together. Now everything is ready for copying. Or should I say, everything is prepared for copying. Great job, folks. And now we'd like to extend a heartfelt thank you to all of you for watching and your support. That was the first take. And yes, of course, we can still improve. But for that, we refer you to the InPaint video we recently released in connection with the Ultimate B9 workflow. You can check it out for more details. The link is up in the corner. And hey, while we're at it, why not leave a like or subscribe if you enjoyed it. Now, to wrap things up, we just have to spoil a bit and show you the first test run of Murphy's new efficiency automatic workflow at original speed, with an SDXL standard model, on a laptop with an RTX 3070. Wie einige von euch wissen, machen wir das Ganze nur in unserer Freizeit als Hobby. Deshalb müsst ihr auf schlechtes Wetter hoffen. Dann gibt es das Video und den Workflow dazu sehr bald. Für konstruktive Kritik, Tipps und Ratschläge sind wir immer offen. Aber wenn jemand meint, er müsse unsere Arbeit hier ins Lächerliche ziehen, dann soll er sich lieber etwas kaufen, das seinen Anforderungen entspricht, anstatt Dinge herunterzuziehen, die kostenlos zur Verfügung gestellt werden. Wir machen das für uns, weil es uns Spaß macht, und teilen es gerne mit denen, die daran interessiert sind. In that spirit, have a great time, enjoy our workflows, and see you soon. Ihr Ziggies.